Um, okay, so let's do infectious cases today uh, for DermPath. Uh, for everyone watching this on YouTube, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with my very awesome pathology and dermatology residents. This is how we do didactics now in the age of uh, coronavirus social distancing. So here is a mass on a patient's hand. It was a deep soft tissue mass, and it was thought for perhaps to represent a soft tissue tumor and was taken out um, by uh, an orthopedic surgeon and uh, sent in to be examined. And you can see even from low power here, there's this circular structure, and then there's a really big zone of, of uh, cellularity around it. And then out here is uh, fibrosis and fatty tissue and skeletal muscle. So let's go in closer and take a look at what this is. And you can see this streak artifact. That's usually a sign that there's something hard or firm in the tissue, whether it's uh, calcifications, bone, foreign mm -hmm. material, um, something that's kind of drug across the blade when we're cutting with the microtome, all right? So this is like one of my favorite cases that I've ever seen in all of my practice. It's just absolutely amazing. And the reason is because it's totally alien and foreign. This is, this is not from the body. What in the world is this? Does anyone know? What? Yeah, wood, very good. Yeah, this is a wood splinter. And what's so cool is this is like the whole freaking branch, right? I mean, this isn't like a little splinter of wood. This is like a stick, like a, a, a big, you know, piece of a, a branch or something or a whole like, I don't know, a whole cross section of a stem of some plant embedded way down in the muscle or in the skeletal muscle of uh, this person's hand, their skeletal muscle there. So there's a few things that are cool about this. A, it's cool to see an entire piece of wood. You know, if you're like a botanist, you probably can tell me the xylem and phloem and all the different layers of the, of the plant there. Um, let's take a minute to talk about plant cells. Remember, plant cells have a cellulose, a cell wall around them. And each of these, that's what the, those walls are there. That real thick material is the cellulose, okay? Um, the other thing I'll point out is, look what's going on around the outside of this piece of wood. There's this bright band of homogenous, hyalinized pink stuff that's stuck to the edge of the wood. You can see it, it's like a halo around the whole thing here, okay? So anyone want, uh, want to take a guess at what that is? You can type it in the chat box or say it, whichever you want. I'm cool with it. There's a fancy name for this. Yes, both are correct. I got antibodies and splendor hopley phenomenon. And that's what this is. This is splendor hopley phenomenon, which is a deposition of antigen and antibody complexes around the outside of, oftentimes around foreign material or around some infectious organisms, like in mycetomas. I've seen it um, around angioinvasive fungus, like in the lung on autopsy, where there was so much fungus that there were layers of splendor hopley around it, really crazy. So yeah, that bright pink stuff, that's what it is. And it's a little hard here on this, uh, the scan because the scan doesn't always pick up three dimensionality very well, but let's see if I can find the area. In addition to the pink splendor hopley, we have these dilated structures here that look kind of like, um, uh, that are kind of round and have thick walls. They look a little bit like the, fun uh, the, um, the cell wall of the plant, but these are actually, there's fungal organisms embedded in the splendor uh, hopley. And I'll show you uh, the stains in a minute. Let me see if I can find another area. On the original H&E, um, it was actually pretty easy to see, uh, but on the, again, on the scan, it's kind of hard because we have three dimensions here. Like these are all fungi in here, but I'll show you uh, in a minute the scan, uh, this, the uh, pictures of the stains. Okay, the other thing I'll point out is, so there's, there's fungus around the organism, I mean, around the piece of wood here. Out here, we've got a brisk inflammatory response, lymphocytes, plasma cells, neutrophils, some giant engorged plasma cells that are filled with the antibody. Um, so actually, uh, there's, there's no fungus out in this region, and there's no tumor here. This is all a reactive uh, process to this giant wood splinter. Here's another look at it. It's just incredible. Isn't it so pretty? If you don't think so, well, I don't know how to help you. All right, so here I'm going to pull up the, um, the uh, uh, PowerPoint here to show you and see if this works, hopefully. Can you all see that still? You can nod your head. Okay, good. So here, uh, what we're dealing with is, uh, this is the MRI, and you can see the actual hole in the middle there, that's where the, the stick is. And then this is all the inflammatory response and fibrosis around it. And then here you can see it in, in a, different, um, a different plane of section, the cross section of the hand. Really amazing, right? And what amazed me the most is I thought, surely there'd be some great history, but the patient actually re didn't recall um, having any trauma here. So I, I still don't understand 
what to make of this. All I can figure is that maybe they had like a mountain biking accident and had a concussion and so they didn't remember or they had other trauma that was so, you know, so bad that the last thing to worry about was like some little scratch on their hand, you know, um, uh, or else that it was alien implantation. Could go either way. So, so like an episode of House or something. All right, let's see. Um, here's, here's just some pictures from, uh, that are white balanced that let you see it a little bit better. Wow, so cool, huh? And then look, it's polarizable too. So a lot of times plant material, and not always, but a lot of times plant material, will, the cell walls will actually polarize. So it's a, it's a fun party trick to show your friends. Um, and look at that. This is in the middle of the stick. Um, it's easier on this picture. There's actually pigmented dematiaceous fungus growing in the middle of the stick. And this makes sense, right? We live in a, in a wet, humid, and uh, warm environment, and dematiaceous fungi, which are like basically black molds and mildew, they live everywhere. They're all over every stick and, and plant out in, the, in your garden and uh, on every surface outside, basically. So I would say almost every time that I see a wood splinter or a piece of plant material embedded in someone's skin, um, even the less dramatic cases where it's just small and in the dermis, uh, a lot of times I'll find pigmented fungi as passengers on the stick, all right? And here's a look at the GMS. The GMS in this case um, actually, um, actually stains uh, the fungus around the outside here, and it also stains the plant cell walls um, on this silver stain. So there's, a, there's the fungi and a closer look. And you, these are basically septated hyphae, and then they have these dilated bulbous areas. A lot of times this pattern is um, seen in alternaria, which some people classify as a dematiaceous fungus and some people don't. But um, alternaria often has these dilated kind of bulbous areas in addition to hyphae. The hyphae become kind of sausage-like. They are like bulbous and then linked together. Obviously, as I've told you guys many times before, you cannot reliably speciate hyphal fungal infections um, on tissue sections, okay? You can guess at it, but you can be wrong sometimes. I've been wrong before when I tried to guess if it was gonna be, you know, aseptate or septate. So you can be descriptive, but like we always say, the only way to really know is to do cultures or to do molecular analysis to, to identify the species through, um, through um, uh, molecular uh, workup, okay? But when I do see this, it always makes me think of alternaria. I suspect there were several different uh, fungal organisms in this, in this particular wood stick. Um, and here's a look on the PAS, again, brightly staining um, the uh, cell wall of the plant and also staining the splendor hopley area. And you can tell the, the fungi don't stand out quite as well. The GMS is a really a good stain. When, when I'm, in skin, when I'm looking for dermatophyte infection, I prefer PAS personally, it's a lot cleaner. But for invasive infections in the dermis or deeper, GMS often works better. And um, one of my friends, uh, Sanjay Mukhopadhyay, he's a lung pathologist. He's a real opponent of PAS for fungal infections in the lung. He always brings up how GMS is way better. And uh, I certainly have seen times where PAS didn't work as well as GMS. So for when I'm trying to rule out invasive fungus, um, sometimes I'll do both GMS and PAS because I've seen times where one worked better than the other. In this case, I just did these for, for teaching purposes because it's such a cool case. All right, so that's the, the, the wood uh, splinter. And you know, the interesting thing is that the um, organisms there are only, so the interesting thing is what, do, what does this mean for the patient, right? We've got this really pretty case, but, but in the real world, they've excised this. What are they gonna do next? They've got a stick with kind of splendor hopley around it and fungus on the stick, but no fungus in the tissue around. The whole tissue around was negative. So the way I conceptualize this is that these are all passenger fungi. They're all just hanging out on the piece of wood, growing happily on the surface. The body doesn't like it and kind of tries to case them off with, with the splendor hopley and all this granulation tissue. But to me, this is not actually uh, an active fungal infection. This is the fungus got implanted there and is living on that nidus, but is not growing away and out into the tissue. So I actually have a little write-up. And for those watching on YouTube, I'll, I'll copy and paste this into the video description so you can use it if you happen to see this and wonder how to write it up in your report. Because it took me a couple of years of figuring out how do I explain this to people and tell them what to do. But my thought is basically, I say this is a wood, a, a wood splinter or stick or thorn, whatever, with passenger fungi. And that to me, this is probably not active infection. And I would just follow the patient up. If the patient um, gets a new lesion that grows up there or starts getting satellite lesions, then you need to biopsy and culture that and treat them probably like there's actually a fungal, an active fungal infection. So you wanna keep a close eye on these patients, but I don't believe that you need to like give them systemic antifungals because in all likelihood, you've removed the whole source of infection now and they're probably 
uh, going to be fine. To my knowledge, this patient did fine. It didn't, I, I didn't get a definitive follow-up, but I never heard back that any problems arose um, after this was removed. So uh, that's the way I handle that is a wood splinter with passenger fungus. Now, in contrast, let's look at a different case. And I've got all these slides uh, hosted on Kiko. Uh, Kiko XP is a website um, started by my friend uh, John Ho, and they uh, upload scan slides, and then uh, then you can uh, actually share them like um, uh, you can share them like uh, uh, on its own platform. It's like a social media platform for pathologists and other doctors to share stuff. It's really cool, actually. So, and the scan quality is actually fantastic. So I sent these slides in, and they scanned them for me. Um, and it's really, really great. So here we've got a case where, let me move it this way. Here's acryl skin. And you can see there's a hole in here. That's where the, the thorn went through the skin. And then it got embedded down here in the dermis. So there's the thorn. This is on the finger. And there is fungus around it. You can see even without the stain, you can see that there's fungus there. But the fungus here isn't just on the, the stick, it's actually growing out, see? And again, just like the other case, it looks kind of like alternaria, um, suspicious for alternaria. Fungal cultures actually in this case were negative and probably that's because this was most of the, um, most of the uh, lesion came out here and I suspect that the other piece sent for culture just didn't have any, um, any uh, of the fungus left. But to me, the fungus here was too much. It's growing way out away from the stick. So even if it's still pretty localized, I felt that this probably should be regarded as a real fungal infection. And this was in a patient with leukemia. So they were immune suppressed actually. And I think that that's what allowed the fungus to start overgrowing here and spreading out to the tissue. See, there's those, these are way too big to be like yeast um, or regular like canidia or spores. So they're like these kind of bulbous dilated structures that link together kind of in chains. Um, and again, that's a, a feature that I often makes me think of alternaria. But in this case, the patient I think did fine and no additional uh, work was needed. So, but I regarded this as being an actual infection that had kind of overgrown and grown off of the wood, the wood source where it came from and then uh, came out here. Okay, so that's good. And there, look, there's dead epidermis uh, right over top of it. 